So one of the one of the unforeseen failings of Brexit, taking back control, is that it's done anything but for the British music scene, certainly the British music scene on the international stage. Uh, according to research for the Best for Britain think tank, uh, the number of British artists, uh, certainly at the Rock and Sane Festival, is down as uh, as is, 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 is increased twenty four percent compared to pre Brexit levels, but beneath this headline figure lies a more tre- a troubling trend: a decline in opportunities for lesser known UK musicians to secure bookings across Europe. Uh, I was speaking to my next guest not so long ago about what you have to do to get around Europe on tour, especially if you add Norway into into proceedings, and it is well, it's just mind bogglingly complicated. Whether it was foreseen or not, I suppose, is another question. Can it be, can it be uh, circumvented? Can we get rounded in some way? Well, Jacko Jackschick, as I said, is second guitarist for King Crimson, lead singer to boot, record producer and a mate of mine as well. Good to see you this morning, Jacko. All right, how are you doing, mate? I'm all right. Are you, have you not, are you in Italy? Have you been in Italy? You were supposed to I'm, be in Italy. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you from a hotel room in Piacenza, which okay. is about a 45 minutes south of Milan, I think. Okay. How have things changed for British musicians in Europe since Brexit? Well, how long have you got? Because there's so many, there's <laughs> Ten, so many different four or areas. five minutes. <laughs> okay, well, I'll try and whip through them. Uh, one, um, you are now required uh, in, in some of the countries to obtain a work visa. Now, obviously, pre Brexit, there wasn't an issue. You could travel anywhere, play anywhere. There wasn't. There wasn't any of that. So, A, it's costly um, because, you know, these things can be a few hundred pounds. And if you've got a five piece band and a crew, you know, suddenly that turns into thousands. And that turns into thousands because it's not just one work visa for um, the whole of Europe. It's it's individual countries. And actually, it was something that Ian Anderson and Jethro Tull told me that, um they were getting the visas for his band and crew to go to Spain, um, and a as I say, it was it was a it, it was a, it's a, a, a quite a substantial additional cost. B, uh, you have to submit your passport um, to uh, to the embassy, and you can't get or apply for another work visa in a different country oh until you get word. that passport back. Right, so there's that. Um, one thing we knew, you mentioned briefly Norway in, yeah, in the, your introduction. The VAT on T-shirts, I think, is one of the well, things. Well, yeah, it? so so quite, especially, you know, smaller group, well, Crimson in particular, we, you know, we sold a lot of merch. So that's T-shirts, um, posters and, uh, you know, CDs and programs and stuff. And and actually on a, on a lower level, you know, you, you can make as much from the merch as you can from the gig itself if you're a smaller band. And so what, what Crimson used to do was um, we would invariably um, plot the tour so that we would we would come out of Germany into Norway and then back to Germany. Um, and at the time, the deal that, that Norway had was they charged VAT on all of the merch you took into their country. You then had to fill in numerous forms to claim back the, the, uh, the VAT on the items that you didn't sell. So, so we would uh, organise a, a guy with a van that the people selling the merch would make an estimate of what they thought they would sell in Norway and put the rest of it in the van. Now, this is going to happen in every country. And A, it's an enormous pain. Um, but B, you get this weird anomaly where <clears throat> you take all your merch into one country, you have to pay VAT on all of it. You, let's say you, you sell 5% of it. And then you try and claim the rest of it back. You then go into another country with 95% remaining of your merch and you have to pay VAT on that again. So in each country, you have to pay VAT. So you're paying VAT on the same amount of stuff, or ever diminishing amount of stuff, um, as each country you go into. So it's it's an enormous pain. I mean... <laughs> Everybody obviously knew what they were voting for. I mean, that's a given, isn't it? We're not going to just, okay, just yeah, we're not going to argue about that because yeah, because yeah. Nigel Farage told us as much. So everyone that's knew right, what they were yeah. voted for. So is this the evil European Union conspiring to ruin the musical pleasures of their own citizens, or or was it that maybe people didn't actually know what they were voting for? Well, of course, people didn't know what they were voting How for. How dare you all... suggest such a thing, <laughs> Jacko? What <laughs> are you incredible. saying? Well, it's an incredibly complicated, difficult and involved thing. 
that was painted as being rather simplistic. It was black or white. It was in and out. And of course, it was never that simple. Um, and and these things have not been dealt with and they still haven't been dealt is it, with. Is it, you? I mean, genuinely a serious question. Is it Europe being um, just bloody minded, really difficult, well, needlessly let's... enforcing bureauc- bureaucracy rules, laws that didn't apply when we were part of the club? I think I think there's two things going on there. I think there's, that's, you know, it's possible that that would be the case. It's possible that 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 would be a political decision to uh, to try and stop other people leaving. Yeah, that's entirely possible. But surely it's a bit like um, being a member of a golf golf club for a number of years and then deciding to leave, but saying, "Well, I can still come back though, can't I?" And I can still park in the car park and go in the. No, you can't. No, you've left. You know. Um, yeah, I, listen, it, and it goes on. I was, I've just given you two examples. I know that. Will it the, get? Will it other... get better? Would you think? I mean, because I, I I know quite a lot of bands, and they're all big and small, and they all say exactly what you're saying. Well, I'm saying, yeah. And well, it's, it's down to it's down to the government to to negotiate it. And obviously, under the Tories, it wasn't it wasn't a priority on any level whatsoever. You know, um, which when you consider the amount of money that 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 the music industry brings into the country is is pretty short sighted. I think. But uh, but of course it's not part of the the normal standard world. So who knows? Who knows? But I know, for instance, <clears throat> the guitars I play. I'm an endorsee of an American um, guitar manufacturer, and and their uh, European distribution place is in England near Cambridge. Um, and you know they used to be able to pile up these guitars to send them around Europe at, on a pallet, and they'd have to they'd have one piece of paperwork. Well. Now you have to have paperwork for every single guitar um, and there's additional taxes and they impound stuff and they don't let it go until the other taxes to the point where, and I know this is true if you talk to a lot of other people don't tour in Europe anymore. Well, you don't tour in Europe and, and, or in the case of this guitar company, they're now, they're now building a place um, in Germany or, or the Netherlands, you know? So it is, it's, it's so you know all this idea of taking control. Well, these people who've been loyal to this company for decades are going to lose their job as a direct result. You know, point well made, Jacko Jack Shake. Always a pleasure. Um, look forward to talking to you again on LBC and indeed enjoying a quiet pint away from here.